I'm Roland Kahn. In this mini video, I'm talking about a feasibility study. Imagine for a moment that you don't know how to reach your particular goal. You want to know what routes might get you there, and which of them is the best. Imagine too that you want to make a wise choice. What guidance might help you arrive, avoid confusion, avoid mistakes, and avoid conflict on the way? I'm going to say a few things to start you thinking and to encourage you to talk usefully to other people. Did you notice that word I used, wise? In your situation, you might just walk away and not get involved. You might bow to pressure, follow the crowd, follow the most forceful, strongest person. You might decide at random, all choices are equal. You might choose just what you want, what's most comfortable for you, follow your gut feel. You might use some mechanical method, like listing pros and cons. You might think rationally, from evidence. Rational thought needs information and understanding. If you have them, you can be reasonable, perhaps make a good choice. None of these in themselves is wise. Each of these options is appropriate in a different situation. Wisdom is something else. The feasibility study is a way to meet people to exchange views and opinions, to explore and share values. It's a way to make sure your opinions are taken into account. It's a way to avoid responsibility and blame. It's a technique for making sure that when things go wrong, and they will, it's someone else's fault. It's a method to talk the project to death, to create the maximum amount of discussion, confusion and paralysis. When all other possibilities and issues have been exhausted, and there's no other option, it's a way to do the job. The feasibility study is the single most important task in getting something done. Depending on the size of the thing to be done, and the people directly involved, it might be a simple reality check. A full-blown research study by a team of people lasting months and costing serious money. Or anything in between. It has one purpose and one purpose only to avoid wasting time, money, or people's effort. We're setting out on a journey to the future, a journey into the unknown. Everyone likes to think positively, see the fun, the excitement, the uplift, and the good stuff. No problem, it'll be all right on the night. This is like suddenly climbing Everest in a t-shirt and sandals, expecting to get there in a quick afternoon stroll. Ain't gonna happen. There are unknowns, lots of them. So we have to be prepared to avoid the worst disasters. One way to do this is to collect as much information, advice and guidance as we can from the beginning. The feasibility study is one way of doing this. Spending a little effort facing the uncomfortable now will ensure success and avoid waste of time and effort later. Thought and study might show many ways to get things done and avoid serious difficulties. You can ask the question in lots of different ways. Is the idea practical? Is it viable? Will it work? Can it be done? Does it make sense? Will we succeed? Will we win? What will it cost? Who's going to get hurt? And so on. A good place to start is with a map of the journey. Where could we end up? Which of those places are successes and which failures? What's going to get in the way? throw us off course and stop us getting where we want to go. What are the dangers on the way? What risks do we need to take seriously? Don't forget to put yourself on the map. Where are we starting from now? Now, with the map laid out, we can trace a route through the maze. Usually there's more than one route, each with different advantages and disadvantages. To consider the options wisely, we need information about each option. Typically, it's good to consider each of these faces of a route. For each route we need to know what is needed, how much of it is needed, and do we have it, or can we get it? For example, we need to know how much we need to pay contractors, how much for materials, how much for license fees, how much for contingencies, and whether we have or can raise the money. And the same for the other routes. We get estimates because some things you can't measure, and even if you can measure something, there are still many unknowns. 
we collect and consider as much information as our time, money and skills allow. As we work and our project progresses, the information accumulates, the unknowns get less and the stakes get higher. The feasibility team do not make a decision. That's the job of the decision maker. At the end of the study, there are only three possible recommendations to the decision maker. There might be more detail to add or to justify the recommendation. A good study will find two or three routes to follow, such as best case, worst case and middle or optimum way, and present their advantages and disadvantages. Remember, nine times out of ten, a decision maker, faced with only one way forward, will reject it out of hand. So, there you have it. It's up to you. Walk away or get stuck in.